Hello everyone, today we're going to cover another request, namely invisibility. Invisibility is a cool effect, but we need to make sure this works well with perception and doesn't cause any other issues. We're also going to do a brand new giveaway today, so stay tuned until the end of the video to learn how you can participate. Before we start, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This scene will be made available on Patreon. So we're starting off with a simple scene here. We have a basic player, nothing set up. We have a uh, well, environment is just a plane really. And we have a camera motor. So first things first, let's make sure we have another character that could actually track us. I'm going to rotate him. There we go. And I'm going to give him a perception and let's give him behavior as well. I'm going to create a really simple graph. Um, oh, I'm going to create a really simple graph. So nothing all too exciting, but we need to make sure that at least it functions the way it would normally function. So that's why I do want to use behavior. So you know, this is something you could actually use yourself. So when it comes to the behavior tree, let's set something up. It's going to be an incredibly simple one. So simple, in fact, that I'll literally give it the name simple. There we go. Let's open this up. So I'm going to create a root. Now, if you're not familiar with how behavior trees work, um, it's basically really simple. This is the starting point and this selects in which order events have to play out. So one being you know, the highest priority, two being the lowest priority. Now these will be using, oh, not the selector. Both of these tasks will be using a condition and the condition in this case would be, um, you know, can the invoker, which is this character, see the player? And I'm going to change this to cannot see. So this is what he'll be doing if he can't see the player. And then if he sees the player, this will supersede what's happening here. Once this condition is longer, no longer met, he will revert back to this, con this set, basically. So the important thing with the task is having the order right. So you can't have this one being one, for example, because if this would be one, then this would supersede him being able to see the player. So the order is important. Now the actions are going to be really simple. I'm going to do a simple follow. So the invoker is going to follow the player. Here we are going to do a um, let's do an execute actions. Marker. And basically what I'm doing right here is I'm setting up a set of actions that be can be called out from outside of the behavior tree. So we're setting it to invoker. And well, basically you have to set it up like this so you can set up a parameter. A set of actions is a game object and we're calling it marker and these names have to match because it's basically calling out this parameter. Because behavior trees work outside of your scene and they work uh, for the project, you have to work with a variable reference. You can't simply drag in something from the scene. So important to keep in mind. So that's it, really simple behavior tree. So let's go to our character here and drag in simple. And we still need to have that set of actions. So let's create a simple set of actions. Let's call this um, go to marker. And yes, that does implicate that we need a marker as well. So let's actually add that marker and I'm going to set it real close so you know it's nothing exciting but it doesn't really matter 
because it's all about the behavior tree that's what we're going to be manipulating now in the past I've used a, a mesh for example to literally block view but that's not an ideal solution as the mesh actually collides with other objects and you're not really manipulating the behavior you're simply obstructing view and this is actually a safer approach um, less prone to well, less prone to errors so I'm going to make sure the marker is outside of the actual character because otherwise he'd be chasing a, uh, a marker forever and we're going to do a simple move character so I'm going to drag in the character move to marker and drag in that marker and that's it that's all we'll be doing nothing exciting now in order for this to work we need to make one change because can see player that perception doesn't really stop because this is the hard-coded player and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that and normally it would be a great solution but we need to work around this being you know the hard-coded player objects so what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a global variable and we're going to do the same here and let's set that up so we have a new global variable and let's call this or well, we can literally just call it player and it's a game object now we can't drag in our player here either as this functions just the same as the behavior graph this is outside of the actual scene so this is project white which is why you can't just drag in a scene reference but we don't need to either and it's actually easier not to do it like that at all so on our player let's uh, let's create a new empty here which will be our invisibility power there we go so we're going to add a trigger this will be on key down and the key doesn't really matter I'm just going to use keep at 9 N no particular reason whatsoever just because it you know why not I want do want the same button to basically toggle between um, you know turning invisibility invisibility on or off so we're going to rely this on a condition so instead of doing another global variable as it can get messy I'm actually going to use a local variable here in this case and sometimes this can be a great solution to you know keep things organized a bit um, local variables can still be saved so you're not really losing out on anything and we'll call this invisibility and I'm not sure I spelled that right there we go and this will be a simple rule now by default we're not invisible so let's actually just call it invisible there we go by default we're not invisible so we'll keep it turned off and in our conditions we're going to be relying on that bool so bool local variable and you could do player here but then you'd have to type it in and a small typo can stop it from working so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose game object drag in the player and then suddenly we can just select all of the variables that are available it's a lot safer to do it this way so if invisible is not true then we're becoming invisible but what we need to do as well is we need to toggle that ball so now that we've pressed it we've become invisible then in the else actions it will be the opposite if we are invisible then you know it will skip to this set of actions and we need to make sure it gets turned off what I'm going to do next is a change material and that's just for the actual invisibility effect so it's just a visual thing and on the character we need to make sure we select the body and the joints I'm going to copy this over because we also will need to reset it once we're done now the material for body is literally called body by default if you're using the default character otherwise just reference to the material your character is using now often if you are using your own character they will only have one mesh with one material so it's actually easier to do and you don't only have to change one material so in the case of Sinti characters for example you'd only need to change the one and this one is called joints so 
There we go. Now let's create a new... I already created one, but I'll just do a new one. Because why not? I'll call this one Invisibility. There we go. So pretty much the same name. And what we're going to do here, just to test out what this looks like, I'm going to create a cube here in the middle. Let's drag it up. And I'm going to drag invisibility on there. This way we can test out what it will look like. So invisibility, this will be transparent. And if you are using a default rend a different render pipeline, this you know this might look slightly different. I'm not going to completely turn off invisibility, uh, visibility. Want there to be type of um, I don't know, predator type effects, but as you can see, it's pretty much invisible. So, okay, cool. Nothing really else to add here. I'm going to keep it simple. Obviously, there are way better shaders than this, but the point is to show you how to do it without additional assets. So, in our conditions, we're going to be dragging in that new invisibility we set up. So invisibility, and there we go. So that's what we're, um, you know, that's what we're doing here. That's what we're changing. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to variables, and we're going to set a object to variables. And let's select player. Now the important thing here is we have to do both. So this will be the you know the new default. So if we're not invisible, um, if we're invisible when we're going back, we need to make sure the player is selected. And in this case, you can literally use whatever prefab you're not using in your scene. So I'm dragging in this prefab. It's not in the scene. You know, it's you can just create a random one doesn't really matter as long as it's not in the scene then we're going to go back to our behavior tree and let's make sure that player is selected there we go and we also need to make sure in our scene that by default and um, we can do that on invisibility just add a trigger here so on start simple action and let's copy over the one we just made actually. So assign game object to player. There we go. So what we're doing here is once the scene starts, the global variable we selected for the behavior, so the one the enemy tracks, will be filled in with our player. So that's what we're doing here. So our player will be the one he's, he's tracking. The moment we become invisible with these set of actions, we're you know changing the look of our character, but we're also replacing the player that is in the global variable with a prefab that is not in the scene, so he can't actually see it. So let's make sure we have this selected. So I'm going to drag it next to it so we can actually track what's going on here. So Oh, but before we get started, let's make sure these actions are actually filled in into the parameter. So let's hit play. And right now, as you can see, he's executing these actions. This is what he's seeing in the tree. Now we're going to move closer and you'll see that now he can track our player. And that's all he's doing, you know, he's going to, uh, going to be following us. Um, I changed his perception a bit, so his perception isn't all that great. But yeah, now the moment we hit F uh, key 9, you will see that he can no longer see our player. And the reason for that is because he's not literally tracking our player, he's tracking what we filled in in this global variable. And now that we hit 9, this has become a different object. So this is the object he's supposed to be tracking. But that object is not in the scene, so he can't actually track it, which is why he's now executing these tasks. The moment we hit 9 again, we are again 
putting our player in the global variable. So yeah, that's, uh, that's literally it. I wanted to find a different way to do this just to make sure it was a bit more reliable than something I've maybe possibly shown before or discussed before. Because, you know, simply blocking perception has some downsides to it. Especially because this was done with a collider. So, I hope you enjoyed this. And let's get over to our giveaway. So, I have three vouchers to give away for a Dark Fantasy music box. It's a wonderful asset that contains music files that are really reminiscent of the Dark Souls games. So, really cool for any type of fantasy game. And all you have to do to participate is make sure you are subscribed and leave a comment in the description stating you want to participate. I will then do a draw and reveal the winners at the end of the week on a Friday to be specific. So make sure you check out the asset. I put it in the description so you can have a listen. It's truly really good music so definitely worth looking into. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.